All right, hello and welcome back to Beyond the Beyond. We are going to approach uh, Oren's Tower for the first time. Um, this is probably one of the situations where I will say I at least partially agree with some of the criticism about this game in that it certainly does not do a phenomenal job of directing you in terms of where you need to go. Um, there are some hints that have been dropped telling you that you want to come this way <clears throat> and explore this temple. Um, uh, but no, certainly no one explicitly says, like, go to the Temple of Arn. And what's more, you know, they talk a lot about how you want to get to the top of the tower, but that's not something we can do yet. That's not something we'll do for um, a couple of dungeons yet. What we do want to do is come here, and what we are doing here is searching for the Moon Crescent. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but first I want to kind of address the central puzzle of this um, dungeon. So basically you have a lot of upper and lower areas and these moving platforms that uh, we will have to manipulate in different ways. And we will move the platforms to allow us to pass through the various levels. Oh. Certainly on the first couple of levels, the puzzles aren't particularly difficult to solve, but it does get a little more complex as you move forward. And while the enemies on the upper floors aren't particularly problematic, as we start getting to a couple of the lower floors, things will get more difficult. Um, so this is the first time that we really need to be a little systematic in our solution. So the first thing we gotta do is move this platform just uh, uh, to the south when we come in. We have a new enemy type here that will show off the sylph. <clears throat> uh, alone, it's not much of a problem, but if they ever come in a group or if they ambush us, um, can represent a very significant problem because they have pretty powerful magic. Um, they can cast group um, ice spells. Um, you can kind of take everyone out reasonably quickly, particularly if there are two or three of them or if they ambush us just someone to be aware of. So once we've moved that platform out of the way, that's pretty much the end of the puzzle in um, this floor. Hey, look at that. We have Taunt reaching level 10. Um, MP goes up by 3. A little more on to the Strength. Um, one thing I realized I did is that I forgot to purchase things for Taunt while I was in uh, Simone Village. So in addition to still being a little under-leveled, he's also a little under-attired. Um, and we have Annie reaching another level. A um, couple of LP points, MP up by two. Um, strength goes up, and Edward's going up as well. Every time we get more MP for Annie, I'm always a big fan. Um, two more MP for Edward, and a little bit more speed which he's already moving uh, faster than Annie and Samson, but I don't mind that. Uh, so we use that on yourself. All right, now we'll just move this here and just kind of walk through this relatively uh, linear path. All right, so I was talking before a little bit about how um, the game really doesn't do a, a phenomenal job of directing you here. Um, smoke bomb. Um, obviously the tower is mentioned and there's not a lot of other options on where you can go. Uh, do I want to go, yeah, I think I go down here. Um, there's not a lot of other, other options on where you can go, but I would have preferred Dark Wolf jumping up to level 13, a little more VPLP MP, not a huge increase in strength defense, a little bit more speed. And Escape Level 1, a very useful spell that we actually might use in this dungeon itself. Um, so yes, I would have preferred for them to, in Simone Village, to have said something a little more specific about coming here. Um, the problem being that you don't really need the Moon Crescent. You don't need the Moon Crescent for the sake of really advancing the plot of the game. You just need to actually get it to advance the game itself, if that makes sense. So what ultimately probably would have been a little better is if someone more specifically said, oh, you need uh, the base of life um, and uh, as, as part of the path to getting up to the Tower of Arun, 
And then someone else a little more specifically noted that um, they would give you the item you need to get to where the base of life is if you gave them the moon crescent. Instead, we just hear that the moon crescent is this legendary item that exists um, and that some guy wants it, but there's nothing else that really sells us on the video of why we would go after it, which I think is a, a limitation and a mistake. However, with that said, it's also things just very typical um, video game style logic. Um, oh man, where am I? Oh, that was dumb. Um, okay, so let's see, where are we going here? What in the world am I doing? I don't remember where I am. Alright, let's... Oh... Okay. Um, I see what I did. That was very dumb. And caused it to reset the entire floor. Sorry. Uh, well, I suppose it gives me a chance to actually talk about the puzzle on the floor. So basically, um, what you want to do is just move everything out of the way. You're not actually going to use any of these pathways. You just have to open up um, uh, path. Oops, uh, little interruption. We got Taunt reaching level 11, which is a big deal because he's about to learn a, a very nice spell. VP and LP by 1, MP just by 2. Um, speed goes up a little, but there is Fire Drake level 1. Um, I'll be showing that off fairly shortly. Um, once we have some fight with a decent number of enemies. Uh, however, we won't probably won't waste the spell on just a normal group of enemies. It'll be on one of the lower floors that we use it. At this point, I basically haven't really been using any offensive magic, just been using uh, some of Annie and Dark Wolf's magic to heal, but that's been it. Um, Alright, so the first thing we're going to try and do on this floor is get that treasure chest below us. So we're going to move this here, and then head across, up this way. And then we'll just move this as well. And in this fight, Samson has leveled up. Level 13. A little more VP and LP, which is good, because he always stays uh, very low. Distressingly low in those numbers, particularly for someone who is constantly being hurt by his curse. Strength goes up a little more, and a little bit increase in speed, which will be nice to get him attacking a little more often. One of the big issues, though, with Samson's strength is that the damage he receives is proportional from his curse is proportional to the damage he deals. So there's actually a lot of time when you would prefer Samson to actually deal less damage than he does, which is an odd balance to get. But hopefully at some point we'll be able to break his curse and no longer have to worry about that. But hopefully at some point we can get him cured of that curse and no longer have to worry about that particular problem. Alright, so let's head down here. Um, we're going to move this back up. And what we've actually done here by stepping back on this and putting it back up is returned it to the position where it started at. Um, which makes this kind of an interesting floor where, uh, where the solution is basically to not touch anything. Unless you actually want to get the treasure chest. Ooh, do I go up or down? I think I go up. Yes. And I would think that probably you can see how if you didn't already know the solution and you were forced to do a lot more trial and error, this could be significantly more difficult and you'd end up having a lot more fights and getting into a lot more trouble. So we're going to move this um, set of... Uh, steps up we're going to go to the right side and we're also going to move it this one and the goal is to get this piece on the right side lifted out of the way so then we're going to take the left path and as we follow this left side we can come back down go back down here now we'll drop these back down into their original position and we should be able to snake our way through and yeah just snake your way through along the ground floor and once we get to the end of this, we will be reaching... Short interruption here for Taunt, reaching level 12. BP and LP go up a little bit. Only a couple of mana points. Strength by 3. Another bit of speed. 
no spells, which is fine. We still have that fire drake to show off. Um, but yes, after we get through this, we will be reaching the final floor of the dungeon. Oh, and we have Edward hitting level 14. Um, 2 VP, 1 LP, just a couple MP, a little more strength and a little more speed, and Thunder level 1. Great spell, I like that a lot. Um, and actually I think he might uh, outspeed Dark Wolf now with that source of agility he got. Alright, so let's finish up our loop here, close to the end, and then we will head down to the final floor. Uh, make sure that no one needs to be healed. Samson, yeah, I thought someone had to be healed up. And he use heal on Samson. Everyone else is okay. Dark Wolf's a little low, but at least he has some extra protection um, from magic because of the um, resist uh, jewel that we used earlier. Now, let's see if I can remember. I think the first thing we're going to do is go for the treasure chest in here um, as opposed to the actual moon crescent. I'm pretty sure we want to come down here first and then we might just go straight in. Um, actually, no, I think... Now, if we go straight in, then this path down at the bottom right will block our way. So we got to move this out of the way first. And let's come up here. Move around. Alright, let's come around here. And then I believe we want to move this. Come across. Ah, that was wrong. Go up here. We do have a new enemy, a gargoyle. Um, again, like most enemies, when it's by itself, it's not a huge issue. They do have pretty high defense. They tend to hang out in the back row, which also adds to the decreased damage they receive. And they do have the ability to um, uh, stone you, or I forget exactly how they, what the, the term is that they use here. Um, petrify, I think. Uh, usually Annie's like my fastest character, but I think usually I give her um, an agility booster too, so I think that's probably why she's going last now. It's very odd for me, but um, I think it speaks more to the fact that the other characters are moving so quickly rather than her moving slowly, which is nice. But I certainly would not mind if she sped up a little as well. Um, okay, and now... I need to drop this. Let's try. Let's see what happens. We go across. Um, okay, so nothing too special about this fight here, but there's a, a couple of sylphs, and I think this is a decent time to try out the um, Fire Drake spell. So let's have everyone attack. Hopefully the sylphs don't do anything too crazy to um, upset everyone. But let's use this. So Fire Drake... Um, fairly low cost and it attacks absolutely every enemy, um, not just a single individual or single group. Probably could have just used Flame 2 with Edward on the Sylphs and would have done a pretty decent amount of damage, but um, it's okay. And here we go. Should do, probably at least take out the one Sylph and the Skeleton Warrior. Good. And hopefully Annie can finish the job. Beautiful. Um, so you can see how helpful a spell like that is, particularly if a character is fast enough to get it off before the enemies are able to attack. And Annie reaches level 14. A little bit of VPLP, MP, strength, defense, and some more speed, as well as silence level 1. So that's our second character who has the ability to silence now. All right, let's go down here. We should be able to get to a staircase. I think we should be able to snake our way through to that treasure chest. Hopefully we won't get blocked off. And we have Dark Wolf reaching level 14. A couple of VP, LP. Strength by two, speed going up again. We should pull back ahead of Edward. And the more I think about it, the more I think that I have uh, locked myself off from where I actually want to go. But let's see if we got lucky. I don't think so. Um, we can pause for this. Alright, let's see. No. Um, okay. So, let's head back to these stairs and try round two. Okay. In fact, I'm actually... I think I am combining the solutions to 
the two portions of the puzzle, which of course is the risk you have in a place like this. Um, all right, so let's loop back around to the far side here. And what we're gonna do is just move this one down, the one that's right next to the treasure chests. Walk across here, and the other pathway should be up that we used to get over here. All right, so let's go down to the stairs here. We should be able to loop through since this is up, and get to the first vase. Or rather, not the first vase, but the first treasure chest, which contains a fire drake vase. All right, now let's head back out here. All right, let's continue on down and head over towards getting the moon crescent. So we're gonna come up here. All right, so now let's continue on. Luckily, several of these are already where they want them to be. That uh, moving panel that's low and kind of to the left that's already up is exactly where we want it to be. This one we want down the way it is. We'll come across here. Oh, first we need to move that over. Okay, hang on. Gonna have to do an extra loop. We forgot to unpause. Um, so let's see, can I, yeah, I can make it across here. So what we need to do is drop this down. Okay, um, so with this one down, we need to loop back around. Should keep this where it is. Do this loop here. All right, so we got another decently large set of enemies. Um, usually I think of it more as being large when there's four or five, but two of them are gargoyles who hang out in the back and have that kind of added defense um, as a result of being up there. So we are going to do a little more magic than we normally would. Actually, I'm just going to try uh, and use just Fire Drake and see how that does for us. Not as much when we're not actually landing our attacks. Um, having Edward attack the Gargoyle clearly was not a great idea, but that's fine. We should lose some of their defense, I think, when they attack. I'm not 100% certain if that's accurate or not. Um, not the defense of their like core defense, but uh, the added defense they get for being in the back row. I think you might lose some of that defense when you attack. Of course, Samson is cursed and can't do anything. Um, so very glad I cast that spell because it was a pretty ineffective round all along, um, all around. Um, but that should be enough for our actual fighters to be able to take care of them with the Flame Drake on board. Edward won't do much, which is fine. Perfectly happy with him attacking Edward, and then hopefully Samson can attack and doesn't hurt himself. That's what. It's fine. Um, in this situation, it's probably better to have him not attack so that he doesn't end up hurting himself. Um, you can see that his LP has gotten very low. Um, so if he were to get groggy again, he'd be very close to dying. I think Taunt's gonna level up. Yes, Taunt. It's 13. BP by two. MP goes up by two more, and a little more speed. All right, so let's continue along this path. Again, we want these to be down. So we'll come across, and now we are good to go. All right, so we will use this to get across, and now that we have gotten across, we want to bring it back up and use it to get to these stairs we were using for albeit without properly setting up the room. And Samson has hit 14. Nice little VP increase, just a minimal LP, some more strength, no more speed, but that's okay. All right, let's head up and around. Now we shall snake all the way around up here. All right, up and around. And then through this gap we created by having these down. And we get... Oh, nothing. We actually have what I think is a new enemy here, the Assassin. I know we've had the Thief. I don't think we've seen the Assassin yet. Um, similar abilities to the Thief, just uh, an upgraded version. So something that I generally like to take out right away. We'll have everyone go after this Assassin so that it doesn't get a chance to attack twice. Um... Doesn't do too terrible of damage, particularly to our stronger characters, but um, with the throwing knife, certainly has the ability to 
go after our um, mages in the back row who have worse defense. Hopefully that will help us take care of the Skeletal Warrior before it gets a chance to attack again. That definitely will. Alright, very nice. Alright, so now, as we step forward, we receive the Moon Crescent. Alright, so we could use the Guiding Branch to escape or use our escape spell, but I'm just going to kind of walk out um, as leaving is far easier than entering is. And we're still healthy enough that I think we'll survive just fine. Alright, continue down and back to the stairs down here. And around and up here. Back across this path and to the stairs. Each floor should be reset to its natural state, so we'll come down, move this over, and have a fairly short walk around to this staircase over here. Alright, let's keep going here, up the stairs, and to the next floor. And then let's see, we just move this over, and pretty much back to the beginning. Up to the next floor. This is the mistake that I made earlier, although this time, luckily, it is not a mistake and is exactly what we want to do. Come up. Um, let's see, this one. Move this across and should be able to get right back to the stairs up here. All right, go through this stairwell. And then we should be able to just come right across. And I believe this is it. Up through the stairs. And we are back to the entrance. Wonderful. So, um, what we're going to do here is just kind of pause, wander back to Luna, and <clears throat> just in case I level up on the way there. Um, and then once we arrive at Luna, I will end the video. But we'll come back um, either at Luna or when we level. And we did have one last level to gain. Edward reaches level 15. A um, couple of magic points. Speed goes up by one. No new spells. Okay. All right, there we have it. We have returned to Luna, so I'll end the video here. And uh, when I return, we will see what the Moon Crescent can do. But till then, see ya.